Welcome folks to Cosmic Brilliance, where we have another fun and educational show with Dragon Face Super Soldier, Apollomy Mendelian. This show will be expanding on some important questions and facts that Apollomy briefly mentioned in our previous episode 34. This show will also include the answering of audience questions and profound scientific facts regarding the so-called Big Bang Theory. So thank you so much, Apollony, for rising to the occasion when you are exhausted and have only two hours sleep and super busy. We're also appreciative. Yeah, thank you for having me again. I, I, yeah, I'm very, very busy lately, uh, especially with trying to get the the book out and and running and uh, just uh, the missions have been very numerous <laughs> lately. So and thank you for having me uh, on the show again. I know you also have been really, really busy. Oh, well, it's always teamwork, right? We do teamwork. Yeah. So it's an honor for me to do that with you. And by the way, folks, you might notice I'm talking softer because I'm dealing with getting over a really bad cough. So please bear with me. I didn't want to postpone a December show for you because I know how excited you are. And this is December 2023. So it's the last show of this year. And by the way, we're entering holiday time. So happy holidays, everybody. So as usual, we're going to start off with a bang. Speaking about a famous hardworking inventor who has tremendous impact and destiny for humanity and Earth, Elon Musk, SpaceX founder, Tesla CEO, who suggested humans will land on Mars by 2029. Now, my personal intuition is that Elon most likely knows that humans and corporations have been living and protecting shared ET colonies on the moon, Mars, and multiple other places for a long time. Someone of his genius, drive, and stature would obviously be heavily involved in classified contracts. So get this, a well-known German N, you can figure it out, scientist, Werner von Braun, predicted and wrote 70 years ago in 1953 that a man named Elon would lead humanity to the red planet Mars. And I'm going to show right now proof of that on the screen. So Werner von Braun, the head engineer of 90N scientists that we brought over here from Germany and employed, predicted the first four or five accurate events that have taken place so far. So he has a pretty good track record. That is no surprise when you realize the ends have very advanced space programs that involve timeline manipulation, right? Follow me, bubble worlds. <laughs> And the ICC have advanced tech and data banks that foretell timeline events and rollouts of tech up to 300 years in the future. So to reinforce what Werner wrote, Musk himself mysteriously quoted the following line from young Frankenstein on Twitter, which I don't follow, but a friend fortuitously sent this to me yesterday. His quote was, destiny, destiny. No escaping that for me. So, Paul and me, I would like you to share your story of remembering working with Elon and who Elon ended up being on Mars, if you would. Okay. Uh, mind you, timelines are very different for a lot of people. And you know that I am a time traveler. I end up jumping timelines quite a bit. So in one of the off branches of the timelines, and I believe I've mentioned this a couple times, just in off glances in some of my interviews, uh, either with you and James and uh, some of my very first ones uh, with uh, a person called Lightwing, um, Elon actually was a big deal in those timelines. He not only brought technology that... Well, technology to humanity, as in for normal people, not just government, 
but he also ended up establishing the first uh base for civilians on mars and from there it was a huge revolutionary period of space travel because instead of just all the governments having this technology and hidden away it was during the time of disclosure and he took one of the hugest steps to being like this is reality this is real we are making this general to the public to advance into going past just you know the orbit of earth you know past the moon and onto mars and from there in that timeline it just sparked this huge revolution of space travel because we went past mars by the time that i ended up time jumping from that one so the technology that ended up advancing from it you know yes every Every inventor knows that for one amazing creation, there's like 10,000 failures, all right, or it just needs tweaking. You know, people are very harsh and critical about things, but it's it's all new. You're You're going into something that is always going to need tweaking, or you're really not going to know how it works until you get it out. It, it's just product testing. You know, everyone has that. Um, but once you get past to a stage where it's actually founded and, and has its stability, you know, that's when things start coming to life. And he brought out, like, I wouldn't say the first version of the med medical pods for healing. Uh, he ended up working on an actual cryostasis. For most people who don't know, in the general public, we have cryostasis. This is how you end up freezing like your eggs for vitro and, and everything else. Um, and the serum that they ended up using was actually that from a frog that ends up getting frozen. They took the, the serum DNA from that and ended up making the cryo serum actually work. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty cool. Wow. That's really cool. So instead of the cells expanding from all the absorption of water, the serum ended up making it to where it ended up taking basically the sugars out of everything. And so basically you're you're taking all your fluids out, putting this fluid in so it protects everything. And then by the time they re-put all the fluids back in, your cells are safe. What a trip. Now, you do jump line timelines a lot. Mm -hmm. So you did tell me that, um, and I want you to be the one to say it, that <laughs> um, how first, how many timelines did you see Elon and who actually was Elon on Mars? So it, it kind of jumbles a little bit. I know there was at least five five stable timelines excuse me five stable timelines where I, I saw Elon and his journey was not easy okay he, he was going basically against a river of what's happening with the disclosure now you know people don't like this it's new all this AI stuff and all this technology that is very advanced for people it scares a lot of people so, you know, it's it's very difficult, but, you know, he just kept at it and ended up getting the attention of organizations I'm not going to say, but they ended up helping him and excelled faster. So the technology that he was using completely went from normal technology that, you know, engineers and stuff have available here to basically tesla technology and i mean what tesla has been working on and above so and nikola they're... tesla also the inventor involving huh? some of that you know about nikola tesla i know a little bit i know who he is on an outward aspect oh i don't know all of the stuff he's worked on he's way ahead of his time yeah so mm -hmm. i do know that with some of the engineering of that like 
and a little bit of crystal tech, which he may or may not have gotten from a certain individual. Um, <laughs> oh, because you knew him in that timeline. So is that yes. sort of what you contributed for him? Well, it was helping him with ET technology. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, because my disclosure contracts over there was a lot different. I mean, it was hard because I had. I have to take all of the crystal technology that is beyond most people's understanding and break it down. So, you know, what's easier in outer space for some things, because the gravity, the way the atoms align of everything, a lot of the stuff has to be forged in space. There is no way to forge it here on Earth. So the manufacturers and everything of the ships that had to be made to be in my outer space to make some of this tech that he did is a lot of money <laughs> and a lot time consuming but I, he he ended up becoming the emperor of mars there you go like there feel, was and you feel like on all five timelines or only a few no all five timelines he ended up achieving it sometimes it was a little different ways of how he achieved it but he ended up achieving it. And not because I ended up helping him in some of the timelines, but you know, oh, some of the technology on. was more advanced than others and other timelines. But regardless, he still ended up being the Emperor of Mars. Like he moved over there, had his housing over there. You know, they were in the works of actually re-terraforming Mars at that point, along with a lot of the ETs over there that had agreed to it. So had to live in bubbles for a little bit, but that's pretty normal. <laughs> so, um, well, Mars has been, in our timeline, Mars has been militarized since the 1950s and flooded with colonies. That's it's, a whole joke of this whole thing. It, it's kind of a rough place to be, yeah. you know, and, and with the 2,000 people that are up there now. So, you Talk know. Talk about that, that, because people okay. don't know that. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, a small group got invited to go to Mars. I'm pretty sure everyone remembers the sign-up sheet for everything. What they don't know is those 2,000 people are already up there. They, that entire subject just disappeared off the face of the planet. They're like, sign up. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And no one's heard anything. That's because they're already over there and they don't want people to know. When you're over there, you have to get debriefed on ETs. There's so much going on. These people have not had contact with their families. You know, so for the people who made it anyway. Um, but and that and was that, that's just was a start. that two thousand people or in the year two? What when do you, when was that in our time? There was supposed to be supposed to be two thousand people to go up there and start a small colony. The only reason why they are allowed over there is because the ETs have agreed to give them a small segment of a test run. This is part of basically a test to see if humans are ready to have full disclosure down here. Because if they can harmoniously enough neutrality, not, oh, love and light, peace, you know, because that's never going to happen half of the time. Um, to exist with them and to be able to, to show evidence of evolving to accept them, then they know how much they can start interacting with humanity on a right. physical level, not just I'm going to abduct you and erase your memories. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, I don't know if I should say this, Folks, you know I have to abbreviate things. In those five timelines where Elon was successful, Emperor had Mars Colony, was the T-Man also voted in? In some of them. There was a couple female presidents who is not the normal running uh, that has been shown lately to actually be president of basically the, the U.S. in some of those timelines. Are they alive in this lifetime? Do you know? I don't. I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with politics in this time. Yeah, I don't blame you. Just uh, okay. So um, before we leave Elon, was there something just in case Elon hears about this show? Is there something you'd like to sell to him? Like, 
Hey, bud, how's it going? Remember me? I'm the one who gave you the crystals. Well, okay, so apparently, rumor has it, um, before we shut down Galaxy of Unity, uh, basically because I needed to write the book and there was just a lot going on, we also got bigger than expected within a year and that kind of surprised us so we needed to step back and reevaluate how we are going to run galaxy <laughs> of unity we are relaunching in january so <laughs> just for everyone to know we are coming back uh, there's going to be a few changes, but we're still going to bring you guys the same disclosure that is awesome and unrated. So <laughs> we just have to tiptoe around just a tiny, minute things. Because I don't allow her to talk about everything on the on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there has been some emails that got dropped into our box, but because scam emails have been so prevalent so prevalent and it's really hard to determine which one is which uh those emails may have been put into the spam folder i did read them and they sounded really awesome i absolutely and they were from them. elon musk is your point apparently so the 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 grapevine says but because we had so many scam emails and I was afraid that my computer and love letters to her. Oh God. Okay. We're not even, <laughs> we're not even going to go there. <laughs> uh, apparently uh, I just, I did not know if they were going to be a scam letter or not. It's not that I totally ignored them. It was a possibility, but I'm very new to the internet still, so I, I'm I'm learning a lot. So Elon, if you're watching this, I promise I will not put you in the spam email again. I am so sorry. You're probably in the first one in the world to spam Elon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. We just came out. Like, think about it in my position, okay? And I'm I'm not one to like deny opportunity. Makes but sense. when you just start out and all of a sudden one of like the biggest people on the planet is like, I want to help you guys. And there's a bunch of spam emails coming out that can put viruses on your computer and hack into it. You're like, mm, yeah. logically, this has like what I, I have a better chance of being struck by lightning. So on a logical standpoint, don't hate me. <laughs> But you never know. He might remember you. He might have access. We don't know what he has access to. Well, I uh, I, I may have like followed him on Twitter because Galaxy of Unity does have a Twitter account. Uh, it's just very outdated. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, he has a destiny, and and perhaps you have a destiny to remeet and help each other again. I I hope so. And you know, once the books finish, he it might end up in his mail. <laughs> Yes, exactly. The first manual we're working on. Thank you so much. I thought everyone would enjoy that story <laughs> to start off with. And uh, hopefully Elon and you will connect when, when the destiny is. So um, a question from a subscriber. She wanted a bit more clarification regarding what occurs during, I always pronounce this wrong, recompense if the wipe happens, and I understand, and we discussed there are 70 arcs that are huge spacecraft left from the original Cedar races that have been activating all over the world and inside the world and in the oceans this past decade, uh, this past decade, I think, yeah. So you refer to most of these arcs as the true gardens of Eden, and you mm -hmm. verified that they contain all the genetics, advanced tech, knowledge and records, that will help people to survive during the reset period, which we're close to now. So you also mentioned that, quote, the arcs are activating because it's getting time for the next seed pickup, end quote. So Marilee's elven ears went beam. And so I want you to remind our audience again what you mean by seed pickups, specifically what they are, who does them, 
and which humans are being picked up. And if that is the same term referred to as harvesting humanity in theology texts. So um, you want to start and I'll remind you of, because that, that was like- that, that was that was, that was that was pretty long. Okay, so what question do you want to start off with first? Uh, just um, about uh, what seed pickups specifically are Okay. Who does them? Okay. okay. And which humans or people are being picked up? Okay. So this is going to be hard to swallow for some people, and I'm going to put it as nice as possible. Please do. <laughs> All right. Uh, the seed pickup is basically, I, I have to bring the definition of harvesting because there is a really scary side to harvesting. Um, that has nothing to do with the seed pickup, technically. It is not by the creator's plans. Uh, harvesting also has to do kind of with Agenda 21 on a negative side. Uh, basically, though certain people might not own souls, they do have stock DNA-wise in your bodies, and the harvesting has been already happening, a human trafficking, uh, people who have been deceased, their bodies have gone missing, and what you get is not actually your loved ones. Um, this has been going on for like the last 10 years. It's just gone way up, especially since a certain event has happened. That is from the dark force side of things. This has nothing to do with the seed pickup. The other part of harvesting, it, it depends, you have to understand a lot of ETs are very logical in brain. So what may trigger people uh, or, you know, bring them to a different mindset is not the same of how they think. So some ETs might say harvesting. It's also another kind of word for seed pickup this is where ets also have stock in people's bodies of, of dna wise what i mean by this is people share a certain amount of dna of their et creator species not everyone has the same amount of percentage okay this is what differentiates like certain hybrids with humans who have either bred with them or got set down here through the gardens of Eden and had their ancestors breed down genetic lines. So if, does that make sense? Yes. And this is referring to the 22 or 24 original cedars. This is the original the donated cedars. DNA for the human race on earth. Right. This only applies to earth itself, not the creators of the universe or above even though some of them are part of that council. So, um, and they have they have stock in this. When I mean by stock, I mean time, money. Uh, I hate to say this, but, you know, they, they're like your parents, okay? Like, you, humanity is a very childlike state, so they are your parents. They may be terrible parents, but <laughs> they, they, are, they are still your parents, so therefore they still have... Um, a little bit of control over certain things when it comes to you getting off world. So there, there is that. Uh, they have the the right, basically, the authority to, depending on your percentage, to come down here and during the seed pickup. And be like, okay, well, you have this much percentage of my DNA. I choose to accept bringing you into my responsibility. Uh, and then, you know, they get to basically influence what happens to you when you get off world. Whether it's good or bad, that depends on your percentage of your DNA. And this is an agreement just for the experimental Earth. This is an agreement just for any seed planet, technically, but Earth is a seed planet, so. Okay, and is there any percentage level 
that people need to have of a certain or combo ET races to be claimed. Like what if they, a lot of humans only have one to 3% high, you know, hybridization. So, or if they have 1%, can they be quote claimed by their parental seed family? So if you have 1%, whatever breaks down to that 1% of, of DNA, say you have 1% of ET DNA, but in that 1%, it is a mixture of uh, Octurians, Syrians, um, you know, Draco or Draconians or uh, any other race like the Sambian. It depends on how much percent of what one say say like an Octurian has more stock in someone's DNA who is one percent, but they have the most out of that one percent versus the other four ET species. That highest percentage owns the most stock, so therefore they get first pick. They get first. Um, understanding of like what's going to happen to you off world and that that parent can either buy out the rest of the stock percentage or you end up kind of getting shared so you know you might have four other like what happened in my case I had like 10 ET species <laughs> who owned me and that's why my programs were so intertwined and confusing because each one of them gets to do something in their own group owned, but it can owned your body your avatar avatar yes a body and so but the highest amount of stock gets to have the final say they get to set down the main rules you can't do this 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 or this for those other smaller groups of stock parental ship. It's just like investors and corporations. The more percentage you have, quote, yep. the more power and rights you have. Absolutely. And it's the same thing. I was shocked and astounded and frankly kind of disgusted when I first found this out. But it also makes sense because even though we might be an experiment, all of us, there's still a lot of stock money and time being put into us. And and everyone's like, oh, well, I'm an experiment. Well, screw my life. I don't mean anything. But that's not true. You can either rise to the occasion and be the best you can be, you know, knowing that someone decided to put all that time, money, and belief in you to, to make you happen. Or you can just lay there on the floor and it's your choice. Basically, that is how uh you are going to be able to access some of the arcs or not some arcs have you have to have more dna uh percentage than others in order to be able to go on that arc now these ones that you have to have that dna percentage are literally from the seed um basically what we call the gardens of eden and I say gardens because there is more than one. And it depends on where your DNA fully lies. So the seed pickup is basically has to do with your DNA uh, percentage. However, some ET parents might be like, you know what? I don't really have any use for this person. I know that sounds harsh, but it is a golden opportunity. Um, they're like, I, I just don't have a use for this person. And you're going to either be picked up as a child, as a, uh, experiment, which is less rights than is a child, um, or, uh, other, we call other basically like, they're not sure exactly what to do with you yet. <laughs> so that that's also an opportunity because you have the right to excel yourself into different categories. People who do not get chosen by this does not mean they have not passed. Okay, so hang on, let me let me put it this way. People who are chosen by their DNA from ET parents do not necessarily have to pass ascension because they are in parental ownership and therefore the parents take 
responsibility for the child's actions off world. Wow. Which means if you mess up out there, they have the right to discipline you or delete you any way they choose possible. So on saying that, the other category is for those who pass their ascension and cannot get on the arcs for the DNA, say your, your DNA is just too mingled and you can't get on there, the Starseed Council has put down arcs for anybody who has passed their ascension to be able to access and get onto those arcs. It doesn't matter what DNA you are. Those ones have the ability to go to what we call a hub where you will be analyzed, basically uh, categorized, which just means that, okay, so uh, you don't have a parental, you have consciously evolved to be a teenager or an adult to be able to go freely into the universe and make your own life. You, you're not a child anymore. And Ooh, then okay. and then you, you basically get uh, your identification as an adult, and then you can kind of choose to wherever you want to go. <laughs> you get a free boarding pass to wherever you want to go. Now, um, fascinating. Now, hasn't the pickups been happening already for at least 10 years? Yes. There are some people who have disappeared off this planet who have had their parents take them off world whether they have passed the ascension or not is up to them if you have a et parent who has chosen to to take responsibility for you and you've passed your ascension you basically get to live in their community as an adult not a child i just want to make that clear <laughs> so you know, if you pass your ascension and you still end up accessing an arc that is for your DNA, uh, you still get adult privileges when you get off world. So then the big question for this is, I remember you mentioned that in a softer reset, what you were saying, a lot of people make their way to various arcs during the thousand year recompense Recompense, and, and they'll yeah. be safe inside the arcs but mm -hmm. you mentioned the hub and finding the arcs how does one know or find the location of the arcs that their dna is going to match with or that's even closest to them because most of the people on the planet don't even know these arcs are activating is it through word of mouth or do uh you know how does that happen most of it is going to be knowing your lineage knowing the history and this is why history has been so muddled throughout the ages uh in uh word of mouth the other thing is is that if you have enough dna in you you're going to feel it and trust me you'll know <laughs> you mean you'll, when, you'll, an arc, when an arc is nearby yeah when it you'll know when it, when an arc is nearby if you have the uh dna to to match it so the other thing is your intention. And I have to make this specifically clear. Just because you share DNA with it, if you are not consciously evolved enough not to be a virus out in space, uh, you will not be able to get into the arcs and the arcs will defend themselves. They will disintegrate you. Smart. And if someone's like, well, I don't know if I'm pure enough. It's not as, as bad as you think. Do you have good intentions for people? Are you a person who claims society over yourself? And I don't mean like, I have to sacrifice everything. It's, are you willing to help people and be part of the community? Are you willing to, to help someone who's in need? These are starting to sound familiar, aren't they? You know, don't be stealing stuff that's not yours. You know, you have to work together as a group in order to survive. Outer space is way worse way worse about laws rules and survival than it is down here on a planet that has resources even if you go to a different planet there's going to be rules and stuff that are already set down can you follow those and i don't mean to a t of like 
man, I really shouldn't have threw that penny down that well when the sign said no because it contaminates the water. If you can't follow those rules, I can't help you. <laughs> okay. Wow. All righty. So another version of the rescue during the recompense period you briefly mentioned in our last show, or actually you mentioned it to me privately, is there have been similar pickups going on, like I said, over the last, you know, years of people deemed important to an ET star family. Mm -hmm. And you explain what that was, but then you also referred to clone drops happening. And I think people need to know about them because they don't realize how many people have been picked up and they're, they're so fascinated and they're just watching these people's clones or dealing with the clones. So, Right. So the clone drops are basically to, it has several things. Um, A, not to alarm people. So it's kind of like there, there can be amount of fracturing or sharding. Um, say a person gets picked up by their ET parents, but that person's like, man, my family and stuff is going to freak out. They, they're not going to be able to deal with this. I have this important work that needs to be done down here, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, or, um, you know, I have several sets of ET parents. One of the ET parents says, hey, this person's making us a lot of money. They have a lot of influence, you know, uh, or for whatever reason, we want a clone of these people down here so that they can continue to do whatever it is that they've been doing. Again, there are several reasons why clone dropping does happen. Well, and also you mentioned that uh, people will just be suddenly missing. Mm -hmm. So do they play with the matrix or timeline so people don't notice? Uh, do, do they just replace it with clones? I mean, there's a lot of options here, I guess. Yeah, but it just depends on, on the scenario and so the... I'm trying to find my words here. You have to excuse me. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just that, okay, say this person is a no Joe Smo, whatever. They, they don't, no one's going to miss them. You know, that person will get picked up by their ET parents. You might even have witnesses and that person is never seen again. You know, that they didn't have enough influence or, you know, it's just that the ET parents either don't want to spend the money to make clones because it does take resources and money okay nothing is free out there <laughs> except for prana <laughs> um you know so maybe they don't maybe the et parents don't have have the money or resources or they just don't find it important enough to have a clone set down here and so they they won't put one down here are they going to erase people's memory depends on what country you're in again ets have a very specific contract for americans than they do other countries so are you able to share what those any of those contracts are for uh, i think we'll do that in another show okay. sure. <laughs> all right i'm putting that down okay i'm not letting you pass on that one <laughs> but, um, now you did i do remember you said in other timelines people actually see people being picked up and ships coming in and physical ets coming here to take control so mm -hmm. obviously that's not happening in this particular timeline it hasn't happened yet. Yet. Our timeline has not reached the appropriate year yet for that sort of thing. Which is more like next year. Probably. Uh, it, next it's to between between next between next year to the next five years. Yeah. So a lot of people are gonna get it confused with Project Bluebeam. Um <laughs> what well, that's their plan. So yeah. You know, it's going to be tricky. It, you have to know yourself and, and and know what needs to be to be done. So that's why we share so much about what the tech actually is, what's really available, what's mm -hmm. being used. So you can discern reality from games being played on you and not be, at, you know, the whim. Right. And it's, it's hard. The yeah. the holographic technology, the, oh, the, so the voice, the voice to skull technology it is all very fine tuned at this point. Yeah. So it, it's going to be very difficult for people who who are just stuck in a certain dimensional reality 
to they're just going to fall for it to you know hook line and sinker yeah if it happens we'll see so so you also said that sometimes uh we do a wipe and then the councils put people back on the planet and right. they are activating now because um, the arcs are activating now because it is getting time for the first seed pickup so the seed pickup quietly has been happening for maybe 10 20 years kind of and now it's going to be more and more and more and more and more active. It's it's picked up a lot since the uh, Draconian, Syrian, Dark Council Wars have pretty much ceased. They now have time for the councils over here to really just kind of focus on correcting the scenario of this planet because they've let it slide way out of bounds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know... Um, their main focus now is, is literally trying to get everything back up to speed because this planet has been a little bit behind schedule more to my, than my, my liking. Uh, <laughs> Me too. Right. So how do these councils, so if they, you know, pick people up and then bring them back down, how do these councils decide which species, cultures they put back on earth or do they ever put them back in a more primitive state? Like, what does that look like? Do they cloak it, do this a lot at night? Like, you know? So, uh, normally after a project is, is done for the first round, we're coming into the first round. We're gonna have the first seed pickup. We've already had first analysis of the situation of the consciousness of the planet consciousness of the people for galactic encounters and development the next is the seed pickup then the first seed pickup and then we'll have the first uh thousand years of recompense during the thousand years of recompense whoever does not meet the priorities of seed pickup for whatever reason you know, and, and people will like, like now, you know, people are going to die during those thousand years and then they won't have to worry about it because hopefully they won't be here. The matrix and the veil and the soul capturing will be taken down during that thousand years. It's going to be a whole different ball. Game Wild West. <laughs> it's going to be a whole different ball game for people to adjust to. And they have a thousand years without all of this drama and suppression to meet the criteria of ascension. And then after that, we will have what they call the, the hard wipe. So the hard wipe is more than 85% of the population gets completely devastated, or they do a full wipe, 100%. If the the councils decide on it it really depends there is not supposed to be another testing after this this planet itself will uh no longer be a seed planet it is it's done its time it doesn't want to do it anymore it will actually be devastated and then reformed into a full functioning higher dimension uh well, okay, I can't say higher dimension. It will be fully functioning to the galactic community, but its consciousness will be a higher dimension, but the physics is still going to stay on in the where it is now. But there's not going to be any more matrix. There's not going to be any more veil, you know, and then some of those people who get off of planet, uh, depending on who has stock in this planet, during the reform will actually come down and populate again well that kind of makes sense now i do want to just clarify for people because there's so much in all our shows that most people have to watch it two or three times because it's really edu quick education that's never been taught before or for a long time <laughs> we'll just say for a long time to the public so i just want to remind people um that this has been talked about but when she says that um you know when she talked about impure intent and if you meet your ascension mark 
what I want you to remind is that's not getting to seventh density. We did an entire show on the tiers of ascension. You need to go back. That means they have to be at the seventh tier, which the bottom line of that lesson is what we repeat over and over again, which is? You have to go through conscious evolution to basically be neutral. This does not include like the love and light crowd. This does not include the dark crowd. It's basically understanding both sides in a point of neutrality. Why do you have to have evil? Why do you have to have good? You know, understanding why people do the way they do, but being neutral about it. No one's hurting anyone to an extreme extent, you know, and no one's being too overly good because if you're too overly good in love and light, any negativity whatsoever is going to cut you like a knife and it's going to hurt. So being a neutral consciousness gives you the ability to go out into outer space and be understanding about other people's cultures, even if they don't apply to your own, uh, you know, so. And then you can kind of decide after that, which way you want to go, but to get off this planet and reach that seventh tier of consciousness that's what we're asking for. That's the credentials you need. Thank you. That's super clear. We can never say that enough because people will forget and go and freak out and go, what do I need to do to qualify? What do I need to do to qualify? So very clear. So just remember that folks, I've been, I did not come in neutral and uh, so <laughs> I, I, it's, an, <laughs> it's an in joke. Uh, so I did not come in neutral either. So, you know, I still had to go through all the tiers of ascension too. Just because I'm a hybrid does not qualify me as a yeah. uh, ascended anything. But we will, I will be teaching how to get to those level of ascension tiers in the book, in my book that I'm coming out with. So, Yahoo! along with, nice. with someone who's very awesome at hosting. <laughs> Thank you. So in our last show, you gave quick examples of the different kinds of wipes that can and have been done by <laughs> meteors, floods, ice age. See, all these people don't even know all this is done on purpose. They just think, oh, it's nature happening. Okay, we can do all this stuff. So, so examples of the different kinds of wipes are meteors, floods, ice age, earthquakes, volcanoes, and your favorite nuke from orbit on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> don't smack me or for a soft reset that can look like finding an arc or being picked up right so right. so and you did say that soft resets wipe out at least 80 percent of a population and they handpick who they want to leave on the planet or just leave the planet themselves so you did more or less explain that the they that makes those decisions who stays and goes in a soft wipe are the parentals mm -hmm. of the uh, and the ones that have the DNA of the ET original cedars and the percentage that you have within you, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Correct. Do I have that, that right? Correct. Yeah. They're the have... they're the ones who started the experiment. They're the ones who are in control of the experiment. And then they're the ones who basically figure out how to end the experiment. So, Apollo, in our last show, you quickly mentioned, quote, a lot of species can't be reincarnated into anything and mm -hmm. not every species can ascend, end quote. So in this show, let's have you get into the specifics of the species as examples of that and why. Okay. As I have mentioned before in previous episodes, the fifth era of man's genetics was like a, a miracle genetic anomaly um before then it was really hard for other species souls to be reincarnated into just anything most people are like oh well you know your soul can reincarnate into whatever it's very difficult for some things and this is how it works so pay attention <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> oh your highest self that we have discussed in previous episodes has the ability to take on quite a many forms. When it shards, a piece of its soul energy 
goes from a highest dimension to a lower dimension. In that dimension, there are several different species that it can be available to it. Humanoids, dragons, fey, wh whatever. Okay, many, many avians, many, many, many different types of species. Felines. Felines that are on a higher dimension. These higher dimension genetics are a little bit more, okay, a lot more malleable to certain energy frequencies that it can be put into. The The physics are just, instead of having like one or two forms of physics, it has like 20, 30, okay? And the soul has like 100. So those DNA frequencies can merge into that, that second form a lot easier. The more you go down in dimension, the harder it is for that form, that soul, to get placed into something with less physics, less dimension. The frequencies, which makes up everything, has to vibrate a certain way. If the code does not say, say a soul has a triangle, a circle, and an octagon, okay, and it's trying to reincarnate into a lower physics body, lower dimension body or physics, uh, that only has um, a square, okay. So if it has a square, if the physical body has a square, it's the frequencies are not compatible. It's not going to be able, you could fit the soul into the box, okay? But the frequencies are going to be very distressful. It's not going to vibrate the way it's supposed to. That body will break down faster, sometimes a little too fast. When you find a body that has a circle, because, you know, the, the higher self has a circle, an octagon, and a triangle, and then you have a circle down here that's a body, it's going to have at least one link to it. The body is going to have a similar frequency that it can vibrate at, even though the other two don't exactly match. Um, this happens a lot with reincarnation. A lot of people will have a reincarnation that has very similar genetics. They'll be like, oh, well, I reincarnate into a, a dragon a lot, or I reincarnate into a feline a lot, or I reincarnate into like some sort of fish creature a lot. And that is because of the frequency sharing that happens. So this era of man, because of the 22 genetics of different species, you've got elven, you've got humans, you've got various amounts of other ET species, including Draconian and Draco. All right, they're all merged together in one ball of messy soup right but there is a lot of different shapes there that have different frequencies and so people who are only had the ability to to be in certain forms can now be in a, a single bodyoid bodyoid i like bodyoid <laughs> This is why hybridization is so important because if you take, uh, we'll, we'll say like one of the um, mermaid folk, okay? You take a mermaid folk and, you know, that is humanoid, but still a fish born, you know, body type and frequencies. So you have two difference there. You have the humanoid and then the fish body variant type. And then you take, I don't know, um, we'll say a, a bird, and somehow by an act of whatever, uh, they fall in love and have a thing together and produce a hybrid child. <laughs> All right. So now you have this humanoid feathered fish thing. Uh and now the different types of souls have the ability to to reincarnate into that body. Now there are some hybrids of species that are, you know, full species that just cannot their frequencies just cannot mesh together. So 
This is where the genetic hybridization happens, where they take bits and pieces of genetics from certain species, which is what happened with the fifth era of man, and they make a complete experimental genome. Was that one of the, because I know if we go way back to the beginning of this universal experiment, mm -hmm. this one, there were rules and laws set down for it that have changed over time. So was one of the very first one is, we wanna combine all the species, get them all working together, all on the same thing, and, and hopefully we'll get to the point like we have, where we have so much intermixing and DNA splicing that people can have multiple experiences and maybe eventually that will create greater peace and less uh, ignorant prejudices. Well, that's basically the main goal for any experimental universe, to be honest. Oh, okay. Well, it makes sense to me. I can't think of a more important goal, like to get to peace and harmony and, you know. Right. And out of ignorance. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So, but do you, are, I know this is a little sidetracking. Do you know any of the original goals that you could share with us? Way back? I know it's changed you know, with <laughs> some, every era. Some things have changed. Basically, the original goal for the original goals for this universe was obviously because it's a beta universe. A find a, at least a couple timelines. Excuse me. Find at least a couple timelines that don't collapse. <laughs> so this is what the councils had to do. Pretty much. So there's that, but that that's don't, for any meaning community. don't destroy themselves. Yeah, that the the collapsing is basically where the programming becomes so toxic or unstable, it just can't sustain itself anymore and it collapses. There's been a lot of those. And it happens with every every beta universe and sometimes even normal universes that aren't beta universes anymore. So there's that. Okay. Uh you know, and then finding a neutral ground on having pretty much the free will experiment those are the two major ones wow free They're... will is is very volatile okay yes yeah it's kind of like learning to rein in and balance free will, which is like an oxymoron. <laughs> for it, it really is. Because yeah. it's like, as a creator, you want full control over your experiments so they don't mess up too much. But with a free will experiment, as much as the free will is on this one, it is an 80% free will experiment at this point. And that can go either good way or bad way or a neutral way. But... Sure. It's it's eighty percent at this point, and and so far it hasn't exactly been to our advantage. So we're doing our best to get that back to a little more neutrality. So mm -hmm. and I'm not even just talking about what's happened on this planet, like as a universal wide. Oh, as a universe, yeah. Universal wide as a free will universe. It's like it's it's still chaotic out there too. I, I, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, when I get to space, everything's going to be awesome and there's going to be no danger and everyone lives in peace together. I hate to break your wake up call. <laughs> yeah, it's even more. That's why, like, if you can handle it here, you can handle it Earth <laughs> almost, needs to be... <laughs> almost anywhere. Earth needs to be the training ground before you go out there. Exactly. <laughs> including sitting next to somebody who wants to eat you right you know? yeah if you can talk your way out of that one you're, you're well i just always go. make sure that you feed them first with not yourself so all all at councils and every single get together everyone needs to have a full stomach before they show up oh, so. bring snacks bring snacks <laughs> bring snacks yep okay so thank you for that that is interesting so this universe you said is not doing that well uh not the worst but not doing that well you said that in the last show 
And I've seen, I've two seen things were big things. Now is free will also one of the common things in other universes? It depends on the experiment. There are some beta universes that do not have free will. Yeah. So it's almost like, as weird as it sounds, it's almost like having free will is like a treat at this point. Again, if you don't know what like free will is talking, <laughs> trick or treat. It is a it is a dual sword. That is for sure. Um, if you don't know what free will is and you're just tuning in, <laughs> it is very complicated to explain. Uh, basically, you'll have to go watch the other episodes. I don't think. Yeah, we're yeah, because time. we got to stay on this. We have a lot to cover. Okay, love. Um, now. Folks, I, if you'd be patient with me for just a minute or so, I'd like to discuss what I discovered mm -hmm. is one of the main reasons that some people, I think, don't have enough energy or as much energy as other people. And I found it both pragmatic and fascinating. So as, <laughs> all, as all of you subscribers know by now, we each have a higher self and oversoul. Now, depending on what your oversoul decides, it will divide into two or dozens of different aspects for the purpose of maximum experience. This has all been explained. The experience you are having now is James or Sarah or Paulamy or Merrily or whomever is not the only you and not all of you. And this is only one aspect. And I keep emphasizing this for people so that they release their fear and their self judgments that that understanding relaxes the fear a lot and realizing that you're mortal and infinite and have infinite opportunities to explore and grow. And that each aspect that incarnates from an oversoul, from your oversoul, okay, here's the trick, requires a certain percentage of energy from your oversoul to exist. This is my hypothesis. So I imagine and guesstimating that prime source creator of the multiverse would smartly choose to keep at least 50% of its overall energy to manage the multiverses, and then maybe put, I don't know, 30, 35, 40% of its overall energy into creating souls like us for maximum learning and experience, which source benefits from, because that's how source expands and grows also. So the important point I discovered or thought about, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm the discoverer of this, just hit me, is that the percentage of energy that your soul's oversoul contributes to you for any lifetime is very impactful, especially if you need to be strong energetically. And oversouls that may choose to fractionalize or divide into many soul aspects for more experiences on, to have under their belt, so to speak, uh, or under their wings, may suffer a bit due to dividing the overall energy between all those fractals especially those going to lower planets with 3D to 4D lifetimes that have the extra challenge of prana or a life force being reduced by the matrixes. So this has never been discussed that I know of in a show. And I think it's extremely important for one's soul wisdom, especially for all of you who are going to be designing your next incarnation. Per so pursuing this idea, Paul and me, I would like you to describe what a prime aspect of a soul on earth is versus a secondary or uh, less prime souls and then offer your ideas if this is a, a very an a valid you know hypothesis that was a lot <laughs> it is a lot in terms of the percentage of energy that someone takes into a lifetime can be okay. tricky um go ahead okay so you want me to, okay, I think you should hit the highlights of that entire sent, uh, segment that you just uh, okay, explained, because so, so that was a lot. It, it is a lot. So basically, it was only a paragraph, believe it or not, but it's a lot in there. That um, <laughs> So describe how, okay, you've already, in our early shows, you, we talked about higher self, astral bodies, oversoul. So the highest part of us, we could say, is the oversoul. That's making the decisions mm -hmm. and uh, sending aspects of itself out into incarnations or whatever else. Now, if it puts more energy, more 
life force into one of those aspects, would that be considered a prime aspect because it's stronger? Your prime is always going to be your oversoul. Always. Okay, so that would be then. Okay, oh, I see where you're going. You're thinking of kind of sharding off aspects. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I'm not getting that complicated into SSP stuff. I'm just going the oversoul when it divides itself initially. Whether when the, over the oversoul. When the oversoul divides itself, it will still always be prime. So all those, whether it's 12 or one or two or 50, those are all considered prime. No, your oversoul itself will always be considered prime. If the oversoul right. fractals into two different ones, they are not prime. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Your your prime has two different definitions. I think that's what you're looking for. When we are talking about a conscious exchange of energy, your oversoul will always be prime. 100%. Now... Say you take your oversoul and you fractal it into two, right? Now you have two primes if they fractal into multiple. Because where your your prime definition is going to be the same definition definition as source. Your source definition is always going to be where the energy came from first, from the level down. Say you have a hydrogen atom. The prime source of energy of that atom is going to be broken down into the particles, neutrons, electrons, and protons. The source of those is going to be broken down into the subatomic particles, whatever those may be. And the source of that is always going to be broken down into the golden and silver spiral, which is explained in my book. So it depends on where you're going for source. The same thing is for fractaline anything. Your oversoul is always going to be your golden and silver spiral in that definitional term. When it fractals down, if this one decides to fraction off into others, that will be its prime source energy for these ones. If this one decides not to fractal off, then the prime source of energy will be from this fractal not this fractal even though it shares the same coding to an extent wow okay now is there any loss of ability and energy the more you divide because absolutely so that was my whole point of that whole paragraph so and that in, and to go into that um quanta transfer is still a fundamental elementary how do I put it, um, point of physics that does not ever like exceed itself. So your oversoul only has a, a certain amount that it can fractal before it loses enough quanta transfer from that, yeah. that it starts to become weakened. If those fractal beyond a certain point, it creates instability. So even though you have your oversoul, you can your oversoul has a an has a certain amount that it can fractal down to, and then those fractals will have a certain amount it fractals down to. But here's the thing: it only applies to certain dimensions of physics. So, say your oversoul is up here, all right, with the golden and silver spiral, and it's all this other stuff. It fractals down into a different lower plane of dimension. Kind of like what we were talking about with like diffuses diffuses yeah. and so even though you might have let's say from this from this top dimension you fractal down into the lower dimension be, be just below that and you have like five of them you can only have so many amount before it has to fractal down into a lower dimension and a lower dimension and the lower uh, not sorry dimensions plane of existence physics having, existence. having more and more babies <laughs> pretty much but even those have a, a 
even though most people think that the lower the plane of existence for the dimensions, the more you can have. But that's actually not true. The lower plane of existence that you are on for those dimensions of physics, the less you fractal because there's not enough quanta and prana energy in order to sustain it. Because it's farther away from the prime. Yes, it is farther away from the prime. The further you go from prime source creation, the smaller the quanta transfer is. And therefore, the it does not have it has a definite amount of energy. Great. That's exactly what I wanted clarified. Okay. So now I know we're not going to get into the whole SSP thing, but I know that uh, they'll clone shards, which is a little bit different, up to like 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, or more, which is crazy. And um, you said to me when we were talking about that, that astral body can choose spontaneously to split itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I responded, I thought that the astral usually only splits off through trauma. And you said it can, but it can do it through choice as well. And then here's the clincher thing, which is, so you said splitting off from trauma is how you create a demon. So there, there's two explanations for that. Cause not demon, not all demons, the true definition of a demon, not the recent definition of a demon. We're talking old definition. The old definition of a demon is a conscious entity that is created from pure emotion. It doesn't matter if it's an emotion of love, lust, hate, you know, uh, joy, uh, anything. So, and it'll get explained how conscious is created in, in, in the book again, because uh, I'll, I'll go into full detail on that. But um, this could be a little teaser. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so demons can be created through trauma and, but they can also be created through, uh, love emotions or light emotions or anything really. It is a condensed, it is a condensed amount of energy from yourself. So basically what can happen, and I'm not doing this in full detail, everything will be explained in the book, is a shard of consciousness of yourself can be created as that pure emotion and from there it can evolve and so if you have most of the time negative emotions are a lot more condensed easily especially in this plane of existence and that's unfortunate but however so they're easily more created now this is technically considered a shard of you. You are taking your energy and you are creating it and then it exists now, okay? This entity has the ability to uh, end up evolving on its own and then can become coherent enough to make choices on its own. So even if it separates itself from you and becomes a full-blown entity, it is still part of your energy source. It is still a fractal of you, and it's it doesn't matter if you have a priest or anything. A lot of people ask these shamans and priests to, you know, get these these demons away from them, but sometimes they are your own, and no amount of priests or anything is going to help you because they might go away for a little bit, and then they're going to keep coming back. So it is a fractal of you that is part of your true essence. And it still counts to your soul fractaline tally. Wow. So this has to do with all that we were talking about in the last 10 minutes, because you were saying demons are literally an emotion mm -hmm. with what astral splits off, usually due to trauma, I'd imagine. So the again, because we're talking about splitting off from source, splitting off from oversoul, splitting off, blah, 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 blah. And what are the repercussions of that? What are the responsibilities and what happens? So 
the bottom line though, in my book is to always integrate back. So when an astral splits off due to trauma, you have to do soul retrieval, right? I mean, eventually you want to do soul retrieval. Right. And uh, just say a few words about that for people, how, how they should be going about that. So soul retrieval is when you decide to take your shard and you have to be careful which one. <laughs> uh, say you're trying to, to re-soul retrieval your demon or, you know... <sighs> I'm debating on putting this in the book of soul retriever, soul retrieval uh, after one of your alternate timeline dies. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Might be too advanced. We might have to put that in year two, but. Well, let, let's just consider one timeline. Okay. Soul so retrieval we'll, we'll, for one timeline. We'll, we'll deal with the, the demon. I am not going to specifically explain on here how to do that. I'm just going to give a basic reference. Right. So it will be explained in the book because it's so important uh, for first years. But I mean, usually I do it for second years. But uh, anyway. Um, so during soul retrieval, what you're doing is you're basically taking that fragment and reabsorbing it into you, into your essence, into your everything. But there are consequences as everything that it has experienced goes into you too. And you need to know how to deal with that. <laughs> Otherwise it can affect you a lot. So, but that's basically what soul retrieval it is. You are taking that shard and absorbing all of the knowledge into you. That it Including what you were mentioning. So you absorb the demon, demon even mm -hmm. if it's a demon, quote unquote, accept the trauma eventually and then resolve the trauma, so to speak. Right. It's just easier not to make them in the first place for the ones that are evil anyway. Exactly. 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 But, but most of that is, is, is made through abuse and terror and, and all of that, isn't it? Right. But there are or misuse certain, of magic too. There, there are certain methods of life that are available to everyone who can learn that to even the, again, point of neutrality, part of neutrality is, oh, bad things are happening to me. It gives me the opportunity to be calm, to be analytical and to react when i mean react is in i can react negatively to this i can meet it meet it at its you know velocity of intent which never usually solves anything half of the time or i can take a different route to this and and either go away or deal with it in a neutral manner like say say someone's going to punch me in the face okay someone's going to totally just like off me in the face for for no apparent reason I can be neutral and still protect myself and react to the situation with a calm, neutral energy, energetic mindset and manner. I simply take the person and throw them on their back. I don't meet them with the veracity of, oh, yeah, you think you're bad. I'm going to hit you too. That is meeting their energy. You don't want that. And it feeds you don't want to feed. You want to take it away from them. And so you just simply put them on their back. You're calm about it. You're neutral about it. You are in your own flow and you dissolve the situation. That's all that it takes. It doesn't, being neutral doesn't make you a pansy, okay? It doesn't mean that you can't defend yourself. It doesn't mean that you have to put up with evil you know, evil intent. It just means you're going to stand your ground. You understand their situation, but that doesn't mean their actions are correct. It doesn't, it, it means that their actions are usually going to be the intent of not being the best for the community or, or yourself, you know, in that intent, like someone tries to stab me with a knife. Yeah. I'm going to take it away from him. I'm going to put him on his back or her back or whoever's back and be like, giving you the opportunity you have two seconds to comply if you try it again you're done <laughs> yeah. so two seconds to play nice yeah two seconds to to make up your mind if you're gonna play it nice or not okay so. well thanks for thanks for that clarity and i know you will get into that there's so much um i do want to share a fun little story of finishing up this line of questioning about prime and how energy gets diluted as we separate and all of that because these two books 
uh, by uh, that I'll be showing here um, by Dr. Michael Newton. They came out around the early 2000s, bestseller books, Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls. I read it and I found two things. I always love discovering things. I don't know. I found two things. I went, wow, this is so cool. That brought up the idea of how the quanta gets diluted. Okay. Huh. And um, Dr. Michael Newton, from my memory, he was kind of a skeptic and, you know, traditionally he was a hypnotherapist and a psychotherapist. And he, this is a compilation of what he found out with 10,000 clients. And the one story that really stood out, mostly because of my Viking lifetimes, but really stood out was that this guy came to him. He was about five, five. And he said, I'm here. I wanted to try hypnosis because just intuitively, something's definitely wrong here. And he said, and he said, um, I don't feel I have enough energy. There's something wrong. I feel like I'm supposed to have a lot of energy. I can't play with my mates when they go to the bar. I'm going to bed early. It's not that I'm sick. I want to know more to the story. So sure enough, in hypnosis, he found the bottom line was that he had several Viking lives. So if any of you have had any Viking lives, uh, you know, your body is like profoundly capable, super strong. You're trained like amazingly and you're used to having like tons of energy and will. And he actually, as a soul, got addicted to that feeling. I thought that was fascinating because I'm like, whoa, soul addiction. What a trip. OK, so so he so his counselors and team, he's uh, we're deciding his next life. And he goes, uh, what? <laughs> I'll do Viking. They go, I think you've done that enough. And so what was arranged, which was incredibly strategic and fascinating, was that he was put into a small body, not a large body. He was like, what did I remember? He said 5'5", five, five, which is small, you know, for a guy in America. And he was only given a certain percent of energy hmm. to work with. Because if you gave him more, he'd like, go for it. And once he discovered this in hypnosis, the whole thing made sense to him, that he was breaking an addiction. And the reason why he intuitively felt, why can't I keep up with these guys is because of the soul memory. So that's a, that's a fascinating thing about what we were discussing about is how much quanta you bring to each life, what, what the quanta level of the fractal is you know so i just wanted to share that because i thought it was an interesting story uh, that's what we call uh grounded <laughs> uh, what do you mean like 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 you've done this too much you have an addiction we're gonna ground you oh, so oh, you're oh, only oh. getting this much you're in a timeout <laughs> yeah versus be feeling grounded so i want yeah, yeah versus versus being feeling <laughs> grounded yeah but anyway that opened a lot of my eyes and brought, brought up all this questioning so now let's continue on new subject but connected speaking of more energy then we figure that as far as i know is the earth is expanding and the universe is expanding just like us so perhaps this contributes to the overall amount of energy available to us as well in creation so what do you think about that apollo well, I mean, on a scientific level, uh, well, just in our galaxy alone, it, it expands and then it contracts, right? It, our our universe and everything it breathes. It's breathes. not. It, it's not just a, you know, something that's dead. So, literally, like we're on the expanding part, and then once it starts to shrink back down, like just like your breath, like you breathe in. You know, everything you're breathing in life is what ha what's happening. So you're breathing in all of that prana energy. And then when you breathe out, you're going back to source. I know it sounds weird, but it will be explained later. <laughs> um, you're going back to source. You're going back to center. And 
Yeah, the energy flow. I mean, like a, a galaxy's breath is much larger than, than ours, obviously. So you have all this energy that's coming out. And, you know, the galactic center and everything is starting to, to produce more and, and, and breathing out. So, yes, we are having more transition period of getting more energy out, which is the prime time to really start to focus on yourself, focusing on center, deciding what it is that you want to do. Well said. Great summation. Yeah, because we get to a point where we turn the corner and then on our way back home in a certain way too, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not even meaning it as an analogy. Like the quanta energy is just exchanging like crazy. So if you know physics, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's an exciting time. It'll be in Manual One. So, so um, I believe as co-creators. The biggest self-empowerment issue that humans underestimate for successful ascension and advancement is what I refer to as thought pollution. So our out of control, undisciplined thoughts get projected onto the hologram and determine our reality and the collective from second to second. So if you want a positive future, you don't want to wait around for things to happen. We want to ensure our positive futures by the quality, as Apollome is taught a lot by, you know, every word, thought, and feeling that we send out to the universe, because that is what changes our reality every millisecond, both collectively and individually. And a large percentage of these wars out there, I feel, are reflections of the internal wars we have inside our own heads inside our right left brain arguments inside negative self talk so um first i want i want your take on that apollo me what do you think about thought pollution well so i didn't really know how bad thought pollution was until i physically in this body started having council meetings with et's okay when I was a kid, I was aware of it because I did have a lot of tele telepathic abilities, but I shut it off at a young age because everyone around me was very negative. I learned at a very young age that um, what people comes out of their mouth is not exactly what they're thinking. And 80% to, it depends on each person, to be honest, but around the people that I was when I was a kid, 80% of the people were negative. They didn't have nice things to say. Well, at least to me. <laughs> so, you know, but I, I I was in the projects and being conditioned and stuff like that. So, however, growing up and still having spurts of telepathic abilities, like there's just a lot of stuff going on in people's heads that just would obviously they don't want to be saying out loud. So it's a good 65% negative most of the time for normal people. Um, everyone has the right to their own thoughts. Everyone has the right to their own opinions. And I'm glad that some people know how to call their, uh, inhibitions of speaking in, in you know, without the in open mouth insert foot motive. Right. Right. But when you get into the council meetings for the ETs, uh, your surface thoughts and sometimes even your second and third very conscious thoughts are a hundred percent red. So even though you might not be thinking it, you're like, keep your mind blank, keep your mind blank. They're reading all your internal thoughts. And, uh, so you really got to learn how to keep your noise, <laughs> your, your thought noise to a certain level. Very, very good example if you're going to move on galactically. Yes. Yeah. But also how much it influences our own creation. Uh, absolutely. And that's why, of course, mindfulness is being taught everywhere mm -hmm. to be aware that, you know, of your thoughts and the feelings and what you're putting out rather than, oh, the weather is just happening. No, we can control the weather as well. Some of that's happening, but we by our emotions, by our thoughts, by our abilities, also shift the weather as anything else. So I want to share really short um, 
really lovely story about um, the power of energy and thoughts. This woman, true story, really quick, um, kind of had a near death experience, died on the bridge close to where I live. And she floats out of her body and she sees the crashed car. And then all of a sudden she starts about every 15th car or so going by, because you know how all cars slow and look at the accident, keep going. She notices around every 15th car, there's this circle of light that goes toward the car. And she's like, what's that? And she realizes instead of people going freaking out, being in their own fear, projecting on that, these people said blessings to her. May she, you know, da, 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 da. So they were all positive prayers slash thoughts that actually to her was visible and mm-hmm. helped to create the strength in her being to return to her body. Oh, wow. I think that's very profound and a beautiful story. And, and it makes sense. It makes sense. Cause like, wh- depending on what plane of existence you're on and, and the dimensions, like when you're OBE, okay, out of body experiencing, everyone's going to see things a different way. They're not going to exactly be on quite the same plane. Now, if she saw her body and stuff, she's obviously traveling in this plane of existence. Mm-hmm. And so the light energy is going to be a lot more bright, obviously. Your prayers, you know, actually caring. Again, we talk about it in the manual, but like. And purposely sending it. And, yeah, I'm purposely sending it. Because those thoughts were to her, that is why those light pillars or light bubbles was easier to see. And not just because like, you know, um, positive energy produces more it goes outward versus you know negative like and fear it's all internal so it keeps close to you I mean don't get me wrong it radiates but most of it is on a lower dimensional frequency it's on lower hertz frequency so that's a great it's a great story about the power of prayer too positive Mm -hmm. thoughts absolutely they're real things yeah so um most many of our subscribers know about Daryl Anka, who channels his future self as an Essasani human hybrid named Bashar. I've mentioned him twice briefly in other shows because I enjoy his sense of humor and wisdom. And Bashar, Bashar says that what is thought of as the mandala effect can sometimes be your unconscious soul capacity to shift to other infinite possibilities of Earth's billions of times a second. And he actually says billions of times per second, and he's never changed his story. And that's based on your frequencies that are largely based on the quality of your thoughts and your overall energetic signature. So that's why cleaning up thought pollution makes the world a lot better. And um, do you have anything to add to that in terms of how much, how often we jump to probabilities and aren't even aware of it? Well, considering I jump a lot, (laughs) um, I have found out that, again, your higher consciousness, like, multiplies itself. And, you know, for us in the SSP, you know, they do it for us being soldiers. They're like, oh, we're going to have, like, 10,000 versions of you, and then fractal you, and then fractal those fractals. And then you're going to go out and do our bidding type thing or whatever they, they have us do. You know, it depends on the organization. However, when you have an oversoul like that, say like, okay, my oversoul is coming into this universe and it's going to have this many fractals, you know, for these timelines and timeline branches. The Mandela effect is basically you have already experienced those in one of your fractals and that memory has transferred to your oversoul. Or, or the other one closest to the, its source. And so when you get to that Mandela effect, you're two things. Then part of it's like deja vu, like that I'm explaining as well. Either you've had those experiences already because of one of your other shards that could still be existing. The timeline doesn't have to collapse. Or the time streams are actually getting really close to each other. And so you're sensing yourself 
and you're able to interact with each other's fields and your osmosis seeing energy through. Oh, that's really, that's really neat. Okay, that makes sense. So when people have the Mandela effect, you know, like, oh, that for me, like, there's a certain president who should have already been president again and had all of this drama stuff that's going on right now completely, you know, done and over with because I've been in those timelines, you know, the, the Mandela effect of that, like, oh, it, it happened in this one, but now I jump to this timeline and this one. I've noticed that it's part of your consciousness like one of your prime consciousnesses that actually jumps over to the body of the consciousness that already exists that you're currently residing in when you have that Mandela effect. So and it's it, not and it merges it's, with that. And it merges with that. so so say you have like uh eight sub fractals, okay, in one plane of existence. So these eight fractals are on one time stream but each of those time streams are of different branches but there's eight of you that exist so the source of the eight fractals all right say there's there's just one up here that divided into eight and they're on the different branches the consciousness of this you know, which which has the ability to to jump into any one of those, you know, even though they're fractals and, and the source energy is that way. So they all exist. The main consciousness of this has the ability to jump into every single one of those bodies at certain moments of time, whenever it wants to. And so I've noticed that when I'm time jumping, it's not my physical body unless I'm in a mission that is time jumping. It's my consciousness of the one that's up from that, from my fractals that are, that is doing so. And so I think that's why they've been like fractaling more, me more down, down and down so that I can't jump anymore. Like there's nowhere for me to go because <laughs> you can only, your, your consciousness can only jump down once you're sharded off. You can't really jump. You can connect. You can be like, hey, I'm meditating, I'm getting those connections, that sort of stuff. But you can't really like choose to jump up and exist within that time space without the other one approving. Wow, that's interesting. So it's when annoying. <laughs> when that happens where the consciousness jumps, does you do you create a body right then in a different timeline possibility or a different parallel reality or you you already exist you already exist uh, it is, your, it, is it is the one that the source that is higher than your existence now that you fractaled from is the one that the consciousness has the ability to jump to any one of those time spaces that you already exist in there has been many timelines where i've died in, in several different ways I remember all those deaths. I feel all of them when it happens, you know? So, but when I, when I time jump, because other forms of the, other than the projects throw me through it, because I have other contracts, it's that consciousness that I, that I found out that is experiencing things. I mean, there's protocols and stuff not to get infected and, you know, all that other stuff from energy viruses and whatnot. There, there's protocols. But but that's what's been happening because I had to figure it out on my own, too. I'm like, how do I keep doing this? Because there's some bodies that I jump to that in the other universes are not quite the same. You know, I'll have different colored hair. Or I'll be a different species or, you know, depending on the on the time branching. So... It's it's crazy, you know. Oh, that is a great explanation of that. Thank you so much. That gives more clarity to that. And I think a lot. I, I of hope I I hope I define that clear. It was a little jumbled, but no, you did. And I think that's really important because P, a lot of us aren't conscious that we're doing that. And no, I, not at all. Like it, it actually took me quite a while to. I mean, I've time jumps before, 
you know, my, my first understanding of time jumping is when the moon crashed into the earth when I was in like first grade. There's no way you're coming back from that. So, <laughs> you know, and I, I literally time jumps or, or not time jumps, sorry, inappropriate uh, terminology. I universe parallel jumped to there where I was in a universe that was, I was in the same classroom doing the same thing. Apparently the universe was just a little taller than the other. Cause I literally slammed down like this much into my desk, spread my papers everywhere, bounced off the desk and fell on the floor. And it took me a little bit to figure out what the heck happened. Literally my cousin was looking at me and he's like, are, are you okay? And I'm just like, I have no idea what just happened. Give me two seconds. Cause all I remember is screaming and death. <laughs> oh my gosh that is so cool that you've been able to hold that whole memory in that process well and I never figured out what happened until you know a couple of years ago when I'm like oh my god I've been parallel universe hopping this whole time yeah because it started happening more and there was more big events that time marked everything for me and so, that's what Bashar was saying we are doing that millions of times a second or can do that into the parallel do, 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 right. do, do, options but, but i haven't figured out how to control it yet but you know i'm getting i'm getting there that's fascinating okay i just have one quick little thing i want to share that you shared with me privately because i just went whoa i wasn't aware of this and then we'll continue which was i asked you in a private reading how many experimental games have been accepted into hanova and folks, uh, <laughs> all of you know that Hanova is the original source, first universe, alpha universe, and we're playing in beta experiments over here. So my logic was that the millions of experimental games that are going on, the purpose is those that prove not to be viral and go through, um, you know, ascension and wahoo, get absorbed back into Hanova. Well, dummy me, because your answer was uh none none of the experimental universes outside of hanova have ever been absorbed in it is a completely shut off domain to the outside uh, experimental universes and anything outside of hanova is an experimental universe so